We will call the 19th regular meeting of the Common Council to order. Sue, would you call the roll, please? Bauman. Present. Berg. Here. Serta. Here. Graf. Here. Kittleson. Here. Laux. Here. Manny. Here. Montemayor. Here. Perez. Here. Rinfleisch. Here. Sigali. Here. Stefan. Here. Van Akron. Excused. Vanderweel. Here. And Warner. Here. 14 present. Forms present. Alderman Warner. I thank your honor. I move the minutes of the last common council meeting of December 20th be approved and at the same stand as entered on the record. Second. Move to second at the minutes of the past council meeting stand approved under discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Alderman Stephan, would you lead us in a pledge of allegiance, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay, we have swearing in a District 3 older person, Gene Kittleson. Kittleson. Swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. Swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Wisconsin. And the Constitution of the State of Wisconsin. And will faithfully and impartially discharge the duties. And will faithfully and impartially uh, discharge, discharge the, duty the duties of the office of older person. Of the office of older person. To the best of my ability, so help me God. To the best of my ability, so help me God. Congratulations. Thank you. Resignation, Steve. <clears throat> There's a letter to the mayor dated December 28, 2004. Uh, I, Anthony C. Bonet, hereby resign from the position of first district alder person of the city of Sheboygan. Uh, signed, Anthony Bonet. And that can be accepted and placed on file. And uh, uh, appointments uh, dated today's date by the mayor. Hereby submit the following appointments for your consideration. Gene Kittleson to be appointed to the following committees to fill the unexpired term of Robert Peterson. Uh, Public Works, Architectural Review Board, and Commission on Aging, uh, all those terms expiring uh, April 18th, 2005. And Gary Laux to be appointed to the following committees to fill the unexpired term of Robert Peterson. Salaries and Grievance Committee and Group Health Insurance Committee, also terms expiring 4-18-05, signed by the mayor. We need a suspension on that and confirm so Jean can attend her meetings. Alderman Warner. Thank you, Honorable. Move for suspension. Second. Is there any objections to suspension? Hearing none, Alderman Warner. Uh, that, Your Honor, I move the appointments be approved. Second. We have a motion and a second before us. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Public forum. Okay, um, Mr. Frank Coxen. And Mr. Coxen, I need your address once again. Certainly. Uh, 2829 Erie Avenue. And you will have five minutes, sir. Okay, thank you for the opportunity to again address the council about using Sheridan Park as the site for Sheboygan Zoo Police Station. On previous occasions, I have presented my assertions that Sheridan Park is filled and that the fill is likely to be material requiring special and costly handling as dictated by the DNR, and that if preliminary steps are not taken to evaluate the nature of the fill, the project could be seriously affected, even brought to a complete halt by the discovery of certain contaminants during soil boring tests. No member of the council has ever risen to question my assertions or offer any sort of rebuttal to my conclusions. This council has been silent and that silence is revealing. There is an old adage that declares silent, silence means assent. Not only is the council apparently content to be ignorant, the consulting firm it hired to evaluate the foresights acted in ignorance. 
when it produced its report. The Kimi report is an inadequate document because no one involved with producing that report knew that Sheridan Park was filled land. Neither the local project manager nor his home office in Champaign, Illinois knew of the special conditions that exist at the Sheridan Park site. I have spoken with Mr. Joseph Clark, the project manager for Kimi and Associates, and a resident of Sheboygan. His signature is on the report. He said he was unaware that Sheridan Park was filled land. And so, the consequences of what may exist beneath it were never factored into the evaluation of the site. We talked further about what might be buried beneath Sheridan Park and how it could affect the project, but in fact, Mr. Clark was only guessing. He had nothing factual upon which to base his opinion. He couldn't speak authoritatively about what exists or what doesn't exist because the site was never tested. The matter never researched. It's wishful thinking on his part to believe that the film materials are benign and will not impact the project. The same kind of wishful thinking that seems to prevail in the council. Then, when I called the office of Kimmy and Associates in Champaign, Illinois, I spoke with an engineer named David. David revealed that the home office was unaware that Sheridan Park was filled land. After some discussion, he was willing to state this. While we can only speculate whether the outcome of the report would be different, the existence of film materials at the site would have been a factor to consider. When I asked him if film material was something that could be ignored, he stated unequivocally, it would not be ignored. But practically speaking, it was ignored by everybody whose responsibility it was to produce a comprehensive report. Ignorance of the situation at Sheridan Park may be the reason for producing an inadequate evaluation document, but it cannot excuse Kimmy for producing a report incapable of reliably guiding the site selection. And there's more. David volunteered the fact that Kimmy has no experience in evaluating projects on fill sites. Their only project uh, involving contaminated site has been a facility that was built on an abandoned filling station where the problem was obvious and the solution was simple. How worthy can the Kimmy report be when neither the project manager nor his home office knew that Sheridan Park sits on a filled site? They openly admit to having no experience in evaluating such sites. Their honesty is commendable, but that does not make up for the basic inadequacy of the report as a guide to site selection. And yet there is even more. At the core of the Kimmy Roth report, there is a dirty little secret that compromises its objectivity. In order to rank the various sites being considered, weighted variables are used to produce the numerical ratings. Sheridan received the top rating of 365. The Imperial Motel was next with 346, only 19 points difference. New Jersey Avenue site was lowest with 237. Now, in order to produce the numerical ratings given to each site, weighted variables are employed. The dirty little secret of the report is that weighted variables do not represent a universal standard of evaluation but vary from project to project as a reflection of what the sponsors of the proposed project consider important. The variables can be tweaked to favor a particular outcome. Tweak them one way, and Sheridan Park is the best choice. Tweak them differently, and the Imperial Motel site looks like the best. <sighs> so who produced the variables, known as the Slight Selection Criterion Report? Who spoke for the citizens and their values and priorities? Page 28 of the Kimmery Report says, the staff team reviewed the criteria list and confirmed that these issues were representative of what was important to selecting a site. The citizens can properly ask who was on that staff team and why could they presume to decide what was important to the citizens of Sheboygan. Well, I assert that the staff team was in fact the building use committee, three aldermen whose bias is against preserving Sheridan Park. I assert that Alderman Warner, Berg, and Wangaman imposed their values upon the criteria of the report disregarding the values of most Sheboygan citizens in order to favor the outcome they desired to achieve. The Kimmy Report is held aloft as a basis of, ob and as, as the- Frank, I'm sorry, your five minutes are up. Thank you very much. I will continue. You. See you in two weeks. Okay. The truth does not grow stale. Okay, next we have Mr. Berner. Yes, me again. <laughs> Can I wipe this fellow? Uh, he's kind of a little, a little bit. Ooh, that's okay. John, can you give me your address again, please? Okay, 1919 Broadway. Okay, Boy, and you, you will have five minutes, sir. You know, on some of those revisions, common sense was uh, what in the world. Common sense. Happy New Year, everybody. New Year. Uh, all you new aldermen that, what is it, your first year that you just completed? Second year? I can't even remember. Time goes so fast. You're doing a wonderful job. 
You really are. You're digging in. You're not accepting stuff. You dig in and you check the people in your locale. I'm really proud of you. I came with a good note. My wife says I don't have a good note. <laughs> uh, since I've been talking, I've been running into a lot of people. And I really didn't know that this Common Council is so widely watched. And it uh, seems they're recognizing me in stores or where I'm at. And I've had some ask why I don't run for mayor. And I thought about it. I says, no, I'm going to be 63 this month. Four years will make me 67. I'd like to do a little fishing yet. But I started thinking that there's, what, how many, 10 people that <coughs> signed up to run for mayor? And I started thinking, what would I say if I was running for mayor? And I thought about it. First of all, I get Social Security, $12,000 a year. If I'd run for mayor, that's all I'd ask is $12,000 a year. The rest could be put in a fund. Four years, that's $200,000. city would have extra. But I wouldn't be doing, I, I wouldn't want the job for the money. First of all, for the 12000 a year I'd want is that it set an example that the savings starts at the top. And as mayor, I would go into every section, and I tell you what, I would dissect it, really dissect it because there's got to be ways of saving money. Where there's places that there's overlap, that doesn't need to be overlap. And for somebody to say that uh, they wouldn't raise taxes, impossible. Uh, you could hold the taxes down, but the city owes too much money. It does. You can shake your head, yes. The bill's got to be paid. So before you can cut taxes, it's just like our government, that when you have a deficit, the deficit has to be paid off before you can lower anything. Uh, and I think the people in the county and the school system could do the same thing. You know, I question whatever happened to the money in the school system when they sold that school out there that's now all, what, apartments and stuff? Maple down? Whatever happened to that money? What about the land the school owns? What are they saving that for? To build new schools? Then if you're going to build new schools, why are you redoing the old school? And I'm certain the school district has it surplus. Questions everybody in this town has basically are the same ones I'm asking. Is my time up? Close? Oh, you have about a minute. About a minute. Yep. But so when I speak, I speak for a lot of people that I meet and the questions they have. And I don't want to be argumentative about anything. I, if I say something, I might hurt somebody's feelings. I'm sorry. But these are the questions some people have. I thank you. And I hope you start out the year good. Thank you. OK. I'm not going to run home and watch you on TV. <laughs> 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 okay, proceeding. We have two hearings this evening. The first one is, I will read them both, and then if anyone has anything to say about either one, please step up to the microphone and give us your name and address. The first one is a rezoning property located at 1331 Alabama Avenue from a class UR urban residential to a class UC urban commercial classification. The second one is rezoned property located at 1317 and 1325 North 8th from a class NO neighbor office to a class CC central commercial classification. 
Is there any interested persons who should be heard? Please step up to the microphone, sir. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. My name is Tony Rezemius, uh, address, business address 607 North 8th Street, Sheboygan 7th floor. I represent Convenient Video, who is the uh, first hearing on the agenda for the rezoning of 1331 Alabama Avenue. And my client has instructed me to come here tonight to inform uh, the council that they do not, in fact, at this time, seek approval of the rezoning tonight. There's been some rethinking by Convenient Video and they no longer wish to have the rezoning approved tonight. Ideally, they would like to have a month to essentially mull things over and sort through uh, their opinions and possibly have an, uh, an approval uh, in a month. However, if that's not feasible, they would withdraw their application for the rezoning tonight. I believe on a document I have hold, so we will be holding that, sir. Okay, very good. And then there is a procedure that they can then contact the City Hall via a letter if they wish to withdraw. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Thank Very you. Good. Thank you. Should, Thank you. Uh, I would say Go ahead. Should probably address you know those issues to the planning department to uh, Steve Sokolowski as, as far as whether you want to proceed with it or not, and and also notify the clerk's office. Okay, we will do so. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to be heard? I need sir. My name is Steve Westfall. I'm the applicant for the second request. And what is your name again, sir? Steve Westfall. Okay. And my address is W7029 Green Channel Road, Plymouth. Thank you. And I, I just make myself available if anyone has any questions or comments that you want to direct towards, towards me regarding my application. Um, so. Alderman Sigali. Okay, since I'm kind of new at this, could somebody explain to me what no neighborhood office to Class CC Central Commercial Classification means? Sure. Steve's Thank coming you. up behind you. Mayor, Council Members, Happy New Year. Um, what we're looking at this evening is there's some property at 13, 17 and 1325 North A Street going from neighborhood office to Central Commercial. Neighborhood office, um, this property is probably across the street on the east side of where Zer Heidi Ice Cream's parking lot is, and there's a couple of single family kind of mixed use. I think there was an old filling station that used to be at the corner of 8th and Michigan, and this is directly to the north of that, on the north side of the alley. What, what they're after is the alley on the north side of Michigan Avenue is where our downtown central commercial zoning district ends. Uh, the neighborhood office zone is a little bit more restrictive in terms of requiring parking, requiring a certain amount of landscaping, require um, uh, some, some of the more restrictive type things where this property is an existing, looks like a residence that's been converted to a commercial building. And what the applicant is hoping is by changing it to central commercial, it becomes a little bit less restrictive in terms of that they can rede redevelop the property in terms of utilizing more of the property that's already there. Um, if, if it stays as is, I'm assuming Mr. Westfall wouldn't be interested in purchasing the property because there wouldn't, he wouldn't be able to expand it the way he might find necessary. If you take a look at these homes, um, they're nice. But with a project like this, it can be even nicer and add more tax base. They're right downtown, has the ability to do some additional commercial work. Plan Commission reviewed it, thought it was a good idea, and staff is recommending approval. So basically what you have is a lot of the similar uses are going to be the same in terms of office, um, uh, uh, restaurants, taverns could go in there, um, um, any retail, any type of uh, commercial use, it's really the aspect of the setbacks, which are the distance you have to be, the building to the lot lines, uh, the parking requirements, things like that. So the, the, what, what they're after today is in order to fully redevelop the property the way he would like to, he's asking for the rezoning. Staff thought it was okay because it is contiguous to the existing central commercial neighborhood that's along A Street. Okay, thank you. Okay, if there's no other questions, we'll 
move on with the agenda. Alderman Werner. Uh, thank you, Honor. Since we have people here for these, could I pull 1712 and 1829 forward, please? Can I get a motion to close the hearings? Oh, I need a motion oh, first to close the hearings, please. please. Thank you. Okay. We have a motion and a second before us under discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Okay, Alderman Warner. Thank you. And that, Your Honor, I'd like to pull 1712 and 1829 forward. 1712 and 1829. <coughs> okay. Alderman Warner. So that for uh, RO 3790405, which is 1712, that I would move that we hold that document. We have a motion in a second before us to hold which one? 1829. 1829, you unheld. 1829, excuse me. Right, not the other one. Oh, okay. okay. And on 1712, I, I would move that uh, the RO be accepted and placed in file and that the ordinance be passed. We have a motion before us. To hold 1829 RO 407-0405 and to pass the RO on 379-0405 under discussion. Hearing none, would you call the roll, please? Um, Bauman. Aye. Berg. Aye. Serta. Aye. Graf. Hang on a minute. Sue. I'm sorry. That's okay. All uh, Alderman Warner. I was just checking these document numbers. I had the wrong ones written here. Just making sure that we were doing the right thing to the right document. And it is. That is. Okay, go ahead. Okay. I did Bauman, Berg, Serta, and Graf. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Laux. Aye. Manny. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Perez. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Segali. Aye. Stefan. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. And Warner. Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carried. 19-1 through 19-6, the consent agenda. Alderman Warner. Thank you, Your Honor. Move that all ROs be accepted and placed on file. All RCs be accepted and adopted and all resolutions, substitute resolutions, and ordinances be passed. Second. We have a motion and a second before us that all, all ROs be accepted and filed. <laughs> RCs be accepted and adopted. Ordinance, resolutions, and substitute ordinance be put upon their passage. Alderman Manny. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> just like to pull 19 to 1. Sure. And have uh, city staff comment on this for public education. It's a significant issue in relationship to our water intake. City staff, you don't have the Board of Water Commissioners here this evening. <clears throat> or Joe Trueblood from the Water Department. I do not see him. <clears throat> my, my guts tell me that maybe Tom Holton can add a little bit about this. <laughs> <laughs> not expertise. No expertise. Yes. <clears throat> You're so comprehensive, Tom. I thought for sure you'd know enough. <laughs> we will definitely ask him to be at the next meeting, though. Thank you. Okay. Is there any other discussion? Hearing none, would you call the roll, please? Berg. Aye. Serta. Aye. Graf. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Laux. Aye. Manny. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Perez. Rinfleisch. Segali. Aye. Stefan. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Warner. Aye. And Bauman. Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carried. 9-7 through 9-11 to be referred. 912, we need a suspension by Alderman Manny Perez, Vanderwill, and Laux authorizing the city attorney to engage the services of the special outside counsel for the common council and its law and licensing committee in a matter of a hearing on the issue of suspension or revocation of a beverage operator's license of Jerome E. Beck, license number 4777, and authorizing payment for said services. Alderman Manny. Thank you, Honor. I so move. We have a motion and a second for suspension. Is there any objections for the suspension? Hearing none, proceed. At the next law and licensing meeting on January 11th, we need to have a quasi-judicial hearing about this issue, and the uh, passing resolution tonight uh, allows that to happen. Would you uh, move to put it upon this passage? Do I move to put it upon this passage? Second. Moved and second to put a resolution upon this passage. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, would you call the roll, please? Serta? Aye. Graf? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Laux? Aye. Manny? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Perez? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Segali? Aye. Stefan? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Warner? Aye. Bauman? Aye. And Berg? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carried. <coughs> 1913 to be referred. 
1914 by law and licensing recommending denying taxi cab license 6638. Alderman Manny. Thank you. Um, Doug Moran, is Doug Moran here? Your Honor, Doug Moran is not here. Okay. So we recommend um, the license be denied. Second. Moved and second that we accept and adopt the report of committee. Under discussion. Would you call the roll? Graf? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Laux? Aye. Manny? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Perez? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Sigali? Aye. Stefan? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Warner? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Berg? Aye. And Serta? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carried. 1841. Resolution by Alderman Graf, Stefan, Serta, Manny, and Montemayor authorizing a transfer of appropriations in a 2004 budget. Alderman Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. I'll move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Moved and seconded. The resolution be put upon its passage. Do you want to take the next one also or not? No, no. sir. Okay, no. that's fine. Okay. Um, under discussion. Again, would you call the roll, please? Kittleson. Aye. Laux. Aye. Manny. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Perez. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Sigali. Aye. Stefan. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Warner. Aye. Bauman, aye. Berg, aye. Serta, aye. and Graf. Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carried. 1842 by Alderman Graf, Stefan, Serta, Manny, and Montemir. Authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2005 budget. Alderman Graf. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I will move that that resolution be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second before us under discussion. Your Honor, I need to amend that. Um, if uh, the other persons would chair and turn to page two. The third item, where it says fire department generator in the amount of $26,500, uh, they no longer need that generator, and instead they wish to change that description to a lawnmower at the cost of $1,100. And um, then also the total um, on the first page, where it says uh, establishing estimated revenue and appropriations for general fund capital outlay totaling $291,854. That should be changed to $266,454. And I would move that that amendment be made. We have a motion and a second before us on amendment. We're voting on amendment. Is there any discussion on that first? Alderman Perez. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, what kind of lawnmower cost $11,000? Eleven $1 hundred. Eleven $1 hundred. Okay. okay. <laughs> That's a big one. Better. Better. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Alderman Segala. Um, could I just please have the total again of what it all came out to, please? Two hundred and sixty-six thousand four hundred and fifty-four dollars. Thank you. Okay. If there's no objections to the amendment, all in favor of the amendment? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Alderman Grove. Then, Your Honor, as amended. As amended, I would move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second before us. So the document's been amended. Under discussion, Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Can we simply vote on the taser gun thing separately rather than in mass? Um, I personally need to know a little more information about taser guns before I can say, yes, I want my dollar spent on taser guns. As a little bit of background, 15 years ago, my husband sitting there, very healthy, was at a meeting at where he was working. He was at a class. And he had a sudden death. And he, he, he is perfectly fine now because they did the CPR. They got him to the hospital. They put the paddles on his heart. And he's perfectly fine now. He has a built-in defibrillator. At the hospital, at every hospital we visited, the first question every doctor, every intern asked us, was there any chance you received an electrical shock? Every single doctor, every single intern asked us that. It didn't happen, but that was the question. So before I want to spend my money on electric shock guns, I want to know a little bit more. Thank you. Okay, we'll have someone explain. I think we got someone here that can explain it. 
Alderman Perez, you had a question? Yes, I do, Your Honor. Thank you. I wanted to ask Steve, does this uh, bring about any considerations for uh, liability insurance in the event that taser guns are used inappropriately or carelessly or uh, hurt someone? We're looking at some, something very serious here. Somebody gets punched with one of these things here. Yeah, uh, yes, there's always a potential liability. <coughs> yeah. Same as a police officer has a gun. I mean, uh, it, there's potential liability there, too. It, it's in uh, where you protect yourself is in adequate training, uh, adequate equipment, uh, and adequate policies on use and, and following those policies. And uh, generally, you're covered as far as liability. But uh, whether or not you have this type of equipment, I don't think in and of itself exposes you to any particular liability. I guess I share some of the same concerns Oliver Montemayor does. I, I, I would like to, to have this if all possible, just pulled out and approved without that taser guns to have uh, perhaps Chief Kirk or some of his officers explain to us what type of background they have on taser guns, uh, what kind, what, what compels a police officer to, to want a taser gun, what kind of situations have we had that, that require one, have we had situations where it, these taser guns are absolutely necessary, I mean we live in a pretty small community here, we don't live in a, in a big metropolitan area and Taser guns is moving up the ladder quite significantly, and quite frankly, they're scary. Uh, all it takes is one person to get popped with one of these things and for the wrong reasons, and we're going to be we're going to be sorry we ever had those. So, if, uh, Your Honor, I, I I guess in along those lines, I would move to uh, pull uh, the taser gun. Uh, Two thousand. You, you want an explanation for that first before you do? Sure. I think Bob, can you explain it to us, please, Ch Deputy Chief? Maybe you can shed a little light on this. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, members of the council, first of all, I didn't know I was going to have to speak on this tonight, but uh, we did send uh, a member of the department to the school for training, and uh, he was, in fact, tased himself. If, uh, if, if the council feels it needs more information on this, uh, we at another time would, would, uh, would supply that information, uh, give us, give us uh, some time to prepare for this, and... Uh, you know, I have no problem with holding off on that particular issue until the council is thoroughly satisfied. It's an officer safety issue. Uh, it's, a, it's an issue whereby the officer uh, does not have to get injured himself, where normally he might have to physically engage uh, somebody that uh, isn't following instructions. Uh, the taser is being used hundreds of times uh, a day uh, across the country. Uh, there are some instances uh, we've all seen reported where uh, deaths are being attributed. However, uh, from, from my understanding, uh, it has not yet been proven that the taser is responsible for those deaths. But I have no problem with uh, the council being uh, thoroughly familiarized with the police department's decision to go to a taser for officer safety and for the safety of the citizens. And uh, if uh, you would like to put this off until we can adequately explain the situation to you, I have no problem with that. Maybe a committee to hold? Alderman That'd Warner, you're, you've got a thing, your light Yeah, I just, speaking on issue, I just wanted to say, Your Honor, that, you know, I can understand that there may be concern, some concerns about tasers, but they're not new in the marketplace, they're not new in law enforcement, they're used across the country, they save thousands and thousands of lives. Yes, there may be an instance where something could go wrong, but most likely something going wrong with a taser is not going to be the same as something going wrong with a bullet. And, uh, and I think that really is the issue that's involved here. It's, it's not only officer safety, it's safety in domestic incidents where these are used most often, where there may be something happening inside of a home, uh, possible violent situation. We have talked about this somewhat in public protection and safety. And in those instances, a lot of times this can uh, be a way of dealing with those situations without someone becoming injured uh, or killed in self-defense by a police officer. So tasers have a place, uh, and I think if the council feels they need more instruction than that, that's fine, but uh, I don't think that we're, by passing this and leaving this in here tonight, we're doing any harm to anything. You can order the tasers and, and, and go forward with that part of it and still have a presentation on what they are. It's not like a taser is all of a sudden something new that just popped up on the scene. They're used all over. It, it would be nice and better for the public and safety of the public and our guests and visitors to this city if every officer had access to a taser and they don't. These things are, I believe, about $2,000 a piece. Right. And, and they don't just uh, go run around shooting, shooting people with electrical charges. I mean, this is all in law enforcement. These are professional people. It's another tool in their toolbox 
to protect the public and themselves from harm. They're not out there trying to give people electrical shocks for some sort of pain. We can still have a presentation on this. I think we should move it forward. We're talking one taser, one taser. And we have someone who's professionally trained and gone to school for it. We're talking about another tool in the toolbox of the police department. And there's really no reason to stop this from going forward. We can still have a presentation by the police department. It doesn't even have to be a committee. The whole meeting it can be at our next council meeting. I'm sure it wouldn't take more than two weeks to put something together. So it's, I think it's nothing to be concerned about. I'll get back to you, Alderman. Alderman Berg, you had your light on. Thank you, Your Honor. Yeah, as far as the tasers, I, I'd go along with passing this tonight, too, and then uh, set up a committee at a whole meeting and have Deputy Chief Weiss bring in the expert on it and uh, explain everything. But as far as liability, you, the officers, there's liability with the, uh, with the pistol, there's liability with their nightstick, there's liabilities all around these officers at all times. So I would say we, could go, we should go along and uh, pass this taser tonight and then have a meeting on it. And if, if it uh, proves different later on, you can always get rid of it again. You don't have to purchase it right away. Thank you. I'll look right back to you. Just, just a final word, Your Honor. I, I guess it, I'm concerned that we're always having to act after the fact. Let's approve it. We'll talk about it later. That just quite doesn't get it. We, we, need, we need to make sure that all the aldermen, including the public, have enough information about taser guns. Sure, there are no tool in the police officer's uh, 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 suitcase, so to speak. But that's precisely why we need to talk about this. I mean, if, there, if it's an old tool, obviously there's some stories out there where these things have done considerable damage to the public. Uh, and I'm not talking about intentionally. I'm talking about all you got to do is pop one guy with that thing wrong. We've got a problem. And I don't care if, if, they were, if, they, if they were doing something legal or not. There's other ways to deal with people than with a taser gun. So what I'm saying, again, is we're always trying to act after the fact. Let's approve it. We'll talk about it later. That's the wrong way to go about it. Let's talk about it first. Make sure everybody understands. Make sure the public understands the elements of, of uh, liability here and, and, and uh, safety. And th what's the hurry? And then we can come back and approve it. So. If, if uh, right. I would make a motion to pull that out. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second before us to separate the $2,000 document for the taser guns out. We're just going to vote on that separately, so we'll speak on that issue. Is that what the other lights that are lit up coming across? That's you want to speak on, Alderman Stephan? Uh, yeah. <clears throat> the city attorney mentioned, you know, there's going to increase liability as long as you have the rules of operation and when you use it. And I guess the obvious question is, do we have that in place already? Obviously, the officers can't be trained, I understand, as a whole yet, but do we have rules of use and when they're going to engage? That's a good question. The, uh, the uh, use of force continuum is in place. Uh, there's, a, there's a certain point along the line when the taser can be used. If those rules aren't followed, you're opening yourself up to liability. So the officers are aware of when it could be used, and they have to reach that uh, area in the continuum before they can apply a taser. So th those, uh, the, the use of force continuum is, is a policy on a police department. It's a state law, and it's, it's followed strictly. Alderman Montfair, same? Yeah. No? OK. Right. Alderman Sugali. Um, I just would like to say, Your Honor, that I think the taser guns are as much part of a policeman's uniform as your nightstick, your gun, your bullets, your handcuffs. It's all part of something that an officer needs to protect himself. And maybe we might not be a big city, but let us not kid ourselves. This is no longer the good old Sheboygan that we used to grow up with as we were kids. This has advanced a little bit more, and we need to make sure that our officers are protected, and so are the citizens. Thank you. OK, we have a motion and a second before us to take Alderman Renflesh. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I think the discussion that we've just had proves the point that we do need to discuss this a bit further. I heard uh, Officer Weiss say the police force does not have a problem in waiting this. They want to educate us so we have full knowledge of what we're voting on. Uh, they obviously need to educate the public that they're protecting out there if there is a new tool that's out there. And I think it's appropriate to wait two weeks for them to be able to give a presentation, uh, explain what it is that we're voting on. I have some experience with them, with the place that I work, used to work, sold them. So I'm quite familiar with them. I'm quite confident they're a very useful tool, as tool that we should give our police force. But I will vote uh, to uh, 
pull this off for right now is to give the police force, as Officer Weiss said, the chance to educate everybody, including the public and ourselves. Okay. Alderman Kittleson. Um, I'm wondering, do, does the police force, do, uh, the police department have any taser guns right now? Or is this the first one they're going to acquire? First one. First one. Okay. Thank you. So we're not referring it, we're just holding it until the next meeting? You got to vote on it. Are you wanting to refer it or hold it? Uh, hold it. Hold it. Okay. Okay, all in favor of holding this part of the document? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. All in favor of holding this part of the document, the $2,000? Okay, call the roll, go through it with the roll so, so we know. Okay. We're, we're voting on holding just this the, item. The item for the taser guns. Right. Okay. So an I vote will be to, to hold. hold. It. Right. Laux? Aye. Manny? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Perez? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Sigali? No. Stefan? Aye. Vanderweel? No. Warner? No. Bauman? Aye. Berg? No. Serta? No. Graf? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Okay. I always have it. Okay, this this part of the document will be held. Uh, explain committee at a whole, or are you just going to have the presentation at public protection and safety, and everyone come to that meeting? No, the next council. Next council. Next council meeting. You want to have it? Next council meeting that is January seventeenth, I believe. Uh, start the council meeting early. Yeah, we'll start. We'll start it early. We'll start the council meeting at. Bob, how much time will you need? I think that should be 6.30. 6.30, half an hour? Uh, or 6 o'clock? Well, it depends on the detail you want to get into, but I think that half an hour should be We'll start the council meeting at 6.30 on the 17th. Okay, Alder McGraw. Thank you, Your Honor. Because of that being withdrawled, withdrawn, um, I'll have to make an amend amendment again to um, reduce the estimated revenue and appropriations for general fund capital outlay to Two hundred and sixty-four thousand four hundred and fifty-four dollars, and I would so move. We have a motion and a second before us for the amendment. All in favor of the amendment? Aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion carried. Okay, now all in favor. Thank you, Your Honor. Then I would move that the resolution, as amended, be put upon its passage. Okay, we have some. <laughs> The resolution as amendment be put upon its passage at $264,454. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, would you call the roll, please? Manny. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Perez. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Sigali. Aye. Stefan. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Warner. No. Bauman. Aye. Berg. No. Serta. No. Graf. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Laux. Passed. Motion carried. On this document, when we speak about it at our next meeting, are we having a representative also here from the company, or, or are we just requesting the police department to speak on this? I intended to have the representative that we sent to the school here. Excellent. That's not good enough. I'm just asking this council before we get up here next week or two weeks and they have questions that can't be answered. Or I guess, you know, do we want to go into that in depth? Okay, very good. Okay, very good. 1853, general ordinance by Van Akron, Perez, Montemir, and Berg amending for the calendar year 2005 sub substitutes general ordinance 141-97-98 which adopted the revision city of Sheboygan compensation program from non-rep employees. Alderman Perez. Perez. Your Honor, I, may, I move that the general ordinance uh, be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second before us that the ordinance be put upon its passage. Under discussion. Hearing none, would you call the roll, please? Montemayor. Aye. Perez. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Sigali. Aye. Stefan. Aye. 
Vanderweel. Aye. Warner. Aye. Bauman. Aye. Berg. Aye. Serta. Aye. Graf. Aye. Kittleson. 16. Laups. Aye. And Manny. Aye. 13 ayes, one abstention. Motion carries. Alderman Warner. Oh, Your Honor, uh, just before we adjourn, I just have uh, something I'd like. We have no I have a question for Tom. Yeah. So we, we have one more document. document. And I'm just, that's why I'm saying in advance, because sometimes we adjourn before, right okay. after the document is passed. <laughs> and I just want to make sure that. No problem. <laughs> talk to Alderman Bauman, hang on. Talk to Bauman. <laughs> talk, talk to Bauman. <laughs> <laughs> All right, General Ordinance 520405 by Alderman Van Akron, Perez, Montemayor, and Berg, amending the municipal code so as to delete and add a position from the City Development Department's Table of Organization. Alderman Perez. Thank you, Your Honor. I'd move that the general ordinance be put upon its passage. We have a motion and a second before us. Under discussion, Alderman Vanderwill. Thank you, Your Honor. If I could just ask for this to be explained, uh, why we're doing this and what's going to happen with the uh, addition and the, the deletion. Paulette. The position. Paulette. Good evening. Um, what it was is it's a position in the building inspection department and it was a position that was reduced to a half time for 04 and we're going to reinstate it to full time for 2005 and it is in the budget. Okay. Go ahead. And I may add that that's one of the considerations the committee had uh, concerning was it in the budget and it was so it had a favorable response. Okay. Would you call, oh, hang on. Alderman Warner, back to you. After, I'm sorry. <laughs> He's leaping. Can I call the roll? Yes, please, call the roll. <laughs> okay, Perez. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Sigali. Aye. Stefan. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Warner. Aye. Bauman. Aye. Berg. Aye. Serta. Aye. Graf. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Laux. Aye. Manny. Aye. And Montemayor. Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carried. Alderman Warner. Thank you, Your Honor. I guess, you know, we heard again how polluted Sheridan Park is, and uh, a couple of things that I just want to make clear is that uh, before we actually do anything there, there's going to be soil borings. There's money in the budget to do, a, to do that, those studies there to make sure the soil is good and that we can build there. And also, I've, I've had a couple of conversations about this with Tom Holton, our Director of Public Works, uh, and, uh, and our City Engineer. And Tom, if you can just let the council know what your feelings are on the situation. With the speculation of Sheridan Park being filled, we've checked with the city forester. Uh, he looked at the condition of the trees. He'd be surprised if that was a fill site. I'd be surprised if there's something there that wasn't manageable. Uh, you look at the grades on the surrounding streets. Sheridan Park might be you know, two feet higher than the blocks north and south, so it's pretty consistent with the terrain out there. And we have projects all the time. You know, if you have a, hit a piece of brick, that could be a a special waste they call it. You know, it's not a, a big issue and any kind of excavation for that station it's going to be an underground park and anything going to be pulled out of there that may not be compact and suitable for building on. So we don't think it's a serious issue. I've uh, been working with the site civil with the project on and Associates and they'll be doing probably three borings in the next week or two also checking for any kind of contamination which they're the same, feel the same way. They'd be very very surprised if they find anything there. So uh, We're not that concern. We are going to go ahead before you get too far in the project and just probably do three borings uh, just to see what's going on. You think that would be wise? Will we have something back by next meeting? I can't tell you that. It depends on uh, when the bores uh, can get out there, but I would say this month anyways we'd know. But more than likely two weeks we should know. Good. Alderman Sigali. Thank you, Your Honor. You know, we're talking about contamination on Sheridan Park site and all the people are so upset that we would build a police station on land that's contaminated, but not any one of these people is saying anything about the children that so happen are playing on that contaminated land. Now, we haven't done anything. If it's so contaminated, we haven't done anything to keep the kids safe, but it's too bad if we pull the police station on it. This is not making any sense here. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> oh, Do I have man. a second? Yeah. We have a motion and a second before us. I have to erase now. Under That's discussion. not good. Under discussion. All in favor?
health care facilities. We need our two county facilities, and it is time this controversy ends. Constantly hearing that, well, we may have to sell. There are two facts that must be remembered concerning the nursing home issue. One is that the county owns the buildings and the licensed beds in each facility. New beds are not being issued by the state at this time as it has in the past, as it has the same way in the past. When a private nursing home buys a county nursing home, the licensed beds go with that sale. If the new owner wants, they can transfer those beds to another private facility in any part of the state. Once the, once the county institution sells to a private nursing home, there is no longer any control as to the future use of that building or those licensed beds. The second fact is that private nursing home care depends on a certain percentage of full paying residents. That's in order to keep their facility in operation. In other words, they can use discretion on whom they admit. Today there are 35 million senior citizens in America. In this population, 37 percent have at least one severe disability. In the next 25 years of senior citizens in America, this number will double. We are grateful to Mr. Charles Conradi for sponsoring resolution number 12 and for Mr. Daniel Berg, Harold Happy Locke, Dale Carey, Keith Obler, Bernie Kistner, Bill Seibel, Jim Gilligan, Jim Baumgart, Carl Adi, Jim Galvin, Harold Reamer, David Carey, and Mr. William Jens for co-signing the resolution number 12. We are presently grateful for all the supervisors we were able to speak with and receive encouragement. Along with those 9,442 signatures comes 9,442 9, plus thank yous to each of you for your concern and support of Resolution 12. Now is the time for a referendum. Not putting it off, all we want is that the record show what the people want. Your support of Resolution 12 will, sh will show that the petition signers and the county supervisors are pulling together for the same care we all want. And I'm going to repeat that again. Your support of Resolution 12 will show that the petition signers and the county supervisors are pulling together for the same care we all want. Please remember, they want to have a voice. We don't want to wait. Thank you very much for your time, and I certainly hope this can be brought back to the floor. Thank you. Thank you for those comments, Mrs. Feldman. Before I call upon the next uh, speaker, the Corporation Council would like to make a comment. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, with respect to our agenda, we do not have the other two speakers listed. Our rules provide that you can sign up to speak in a manner that's inconsistent with our other rules that say the agenda has to go out early. Uh, we've never been faced with a situation where the conflict has come up in that our agenda is inconsistent with the speaker sign up. I'm a little apprehensive about whether we have an open meeting conflict here. It's my understanding the other two speakers that signed up in a timely fashion are speaking on the same subject as Mrs. Feldman, is that correct? Yes. That being the case, 
I believe we can go forward, but if we had a situation where someone signed up Monday morning to speak on the Sheboygan Marsh or something like that, I think we would have a problem and we're gonna need to address it. But given the fact that the topic is the same, I don't see an open meeting problem here and, and we can proceed, but I just want to alert us all to the potential open meeting problem if the scenario is a little bit different than what we have here. Our second speaker is Edith Brubink, if you would come forward. Thank you for allowing me to speak this evening. I'm Edith Brink of Sumac Road, Plymouth. I strongly support a referendum on whether to keep Sunny Ridge Healthcare and Rehabilitation Center and Rocky Knoll Nursing Home county owned and operated. This issue is of utmost importance to me because my sister Muriel Lowerdink formerly of Waldo, has been a resident of Sunny Ridge since November 1, 2000. She has Alzheimer's disease, a neurological disorder that is incurable and irreversible. It is also referred to as brain damage. Alzheimer's disease first robs the mind, next the individual's humanity, and finally takes the body. In January 2000, it was determined that she could no longer live in her home. An application for admission was submitted to Pine Haven Christian Home in Sheboygan Falls. Muriel is a member of one of the 18 churches which supports Pine Haven. They refused to admit her saying that they did not offer the level of care that her condition required. My father was an active participant during the organization and beginning planning stage stages of Pine Haven. My parents, also members of a supporting church, supported Pine Haven through generous and regular donations. Muriel's two children, continue to support Pine Haven financially. Since I am a member of one of these supporting churches, I too continue to support Pine Haven Christian Home in addition to supporting the county nursing homes through taxes. Muriel was placed in an assisted living facility in Waldo. After a month, her medication needed to be adjusted, so she was taken to Memorial Medical Hospital. The Waldo facility would not accept her back, so she was placed in a facility in Random Lake. In early June, her medication needed to be readjusted again. She was sent to the behavioral health ward at Memorial Medical. The Random Lake facility would not accept her back. Following her stay at Memorial Medical, she was sent to a facility in Sheboygan, which had a floor